Right, today we are going to be looking at what an experiment is and how we do experiments in psychology. So today's video is the video for week one. Hi, I'm Miss Fahib and I'm going to be teaching you some of the basics you need to know before you get really stuck into research methods. You need to make sure you watch this video really carefully and take note of any definitions using your homework booklet as you're watching the videos. I'm going to be talking you through how we conduct experiments in psychology. I'm also going to give you some practical examples as we go through just to make sure you understand. I do want to let you know that not all research methods that we're going to cover are going to be experiments, but we'll come on to that a little bit later. So the first thing we need to do when we are conducting an experiment is start with the aim. So we need to state what we are interested in investigating. So we need to know what the general question is that we wish to answer by conducting our experiment. Experiment. The aim must always start with to investigate or to establish. So, if we were looking at the investigation of the effects of marijuana on reaction time, I've stated what I intend to study in my experiment by saying to investigate the effects of marijuana on react reaction time. The next thing I need to do is identify the IV and the DV. So the IV stands for independent variable and the DV stands for the dependent variable. Now I know these sound like big words but don't worry I'm going to talk you through what they mean and you should understand after that. So the independent variable is the thing that we manipulate in the experiment. So it's the thing that we change in the experiment. If we are investigating how marijuana affects reaction time, we are manipulating whether or not the groups are given marijuana in the first place. So the IV is whether or not the participants were given marijuana. But in psychology, it's really important that you know this, that we need to be very specific when we state the IV. So we need to operationalize it. And when I say operationalize, I mean we need to strictly define the variables into measurable factors. So when we operationalize the IV, it's important that we state each of the conditions. So for our experiment on marijuana on reaction time, the operationalized IV is participants not given marijuana, so I've identified one of the groups, versus participants given 0.5 grams of marijuana. That's our second condition. So we have stated there that there are two conditions. Now the DV, the dependent variable, is what you want to measure in the experiment. Okay. So we are measuring the reaction times for each condition with or without marijuana. So we are measuring reaction times. So reaction times or reaction time is our DV, it's our dependent variable. Okay. The reaction time depends on whether or not the participants have been given marijuana. But remember, in psychology, again, just like the IV, we need to be really specific when we state the DV, so we must operationalize it. So we need to put it into strictly um, kind of measurable factors. So our operationalized DV is not just reaction time, but it's reaction time in seconds. We are being really specific here and explaining how we are measuring the reaction time and it's in seconds, not minutes, seconds. 
So our operationalized DV is reaction time in seconds. So we have operationalized it completely. We've operationalized our IV and our DV. The next thing I need to do is formulate a hypothesis. So this is the third step. We formulate a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an idea derived from psychological theory which contains a prediction which can be verified or refuted by an experiment. So what we're doing here by writing down or coming up with a hypothesis is making a prediction about the way we think our results are going to go. Before I formulate a hypothesis, I need to first find out whether there's been any previous research conducted similar to the one I am kind of conducting in my experiment. So with a quick Google search, I can see that there has been many research, kind of many research done on marijuana and reaction time. So because of that, I need to formulate a directional hypothesis. So I've got some indication about which direction my results will go by looking at the past research. So my hypothesis needs to be directional. So this is sometimes referred to as a one-tailed hypothesis. If there was no previous research, I would write a non-directional hypothesis. This would state that there would be a difference between the two conditions, but wouldn't specify which di direction it would go in. This is sometimes referred to as a two-tailed hypothesis. So my hypothesis for the experiment on marijuana and reaction times is that the participants in condition without marijuana will have a slower reaction time in seconds than the participants who are given 0.5 grams of marijuana. Do you notice here how the IV and the DV are operationalized? So in red, we have the operationalized independent variable. And in green, we have the operationalized dependent variable. Okay, we have stated what direction our results are going to go in because we've used a directional hypothesis. My experimental hypothesis must always be accompanied by something called a null hypothesis. So a null hypothesis states that there will be no difference between the two conditions in the experiment. So I will have one experimental hypothesis, which will be either directional or non-directional, and it will be accompanied by the null hypothesis that states that there will be no difference between the two conditions in the experiment. What we do with these hypotheses we will decide at the end once we've run our results. So, what next? The next thing we need to do is decide on an experimental design. So an experimental design is kind of involves the question of how we arrange the conditions of our experiment. Here we need to take into account how we will pick our participants, and how we can stop other things from interfering with our results. So you need to know about three types of experimental design we can use when planning an experiment. Right, so the first experimental design we're going to look at is independent groups design. So this is when a separate group of participants are used for each condition of the experiment. So let's think back to our experiment on marijuana and reaction time. An independent group's design would be used if we had one group of participants who were given marijuana and a separate group of participants who were not given marijuana. The second experimental design is repeated measures. So this is when only one group of participants is used. And this group does both conditions of the experiment. So let's have a think back again to our experiment. Um, a repeated measures design would be used if we had one group of participants who took part in the condition with the marijuana 
And then they came back later on, maybe a few weeks later, and took part in the condition without marijuana. But it is the same group of participants. The same group are repeating the experiments under both conditions. Right, so the last experimental design you need to know is a matched pairs design. This is really similar to an independent groups. Two equal groups of participants are used, one group for each of the conditions. But the thing that's different here is that the participants are matched based on key variables. So, I'll give you an example to make it a little bit more clear. So think back to our experiment on marijuana and reaction time. A matched pairs design would be used if we had one group of participants and then match them on key characteristics that may affect the dependent variable, so our, our reaction time, our results. So a key variable we could match for may be age, because that could potentially affect reaction time. So if we matched a pair of participants of the same age, one of the 21-year-olds would go to kind of allocated to one group with marijuana and the other 21-year-old would be allocated to the group without marijuana. Just a quick warning, you are going to need to know the strengths and weaknesses for each of these experimental designs, but we're going to be covering that in class, so don't worry about that too much now. So, the next thing we need to do, after we consider experimental design, is to actually collect the data for our experiment. So to do this properly, everything you say must be scripted in advance. This is called standardization. And this standardized method will ensure fairness across both conditions. So if there is an experimenter or two separate experimenters in both conditions, they will both have a standard set of instructions and a scripted um, kind of speech to give the participants before they commence the experiment. So, standardized instructions means that basically we are explaining to both groups in the same way what's going to happen in the experiment to prevent any bias. So, for our experiment, we could say, you will be required to complete a computer task. Every time you see an X appear on the screen, you must press the space bar on your keyboard. If at any point you would like to stop, please let me know. You will begin when you hear the buzzer. The computer will indicate when the task is over. This is a standard set of instructions that will be read out to all of the participants. The next thing we need to do is analyze our data once we have it. So graphs and charts are really useful to have, but there are so many different techniques we can use in psychology. This will give us an indication about what our results actually mean. So, if we have a look here, we have our bar chart showing our results. So it's got the mean reaction time in seconds on one axis and on the other axis we have got the two conditions with or without marijuana. As we can see from the above graph the mean reaction time in seconds is lower than people kind of who were in the condition without marijuana. So we can say for our experiment that reaction times were slower in seconds for the participants who are given 0.5 grams of marijuana in comparison to the condition without marijuana. Right, so the last thing we need to know is what our results actually mean and what we do now with our hypothesis. So, we accept our experimental hypothesis. So our experimental hypothesis was that the participants in the condition without marijuana will have a slower reaction time in seconds than the participants who were given 0.5 grams of marijuana. 
from what running our results, actually, that's proven our hypothesis to be pretty accurate. So we accept our experimental hypothesis. Now, the null hypothesis that has accompanied our experimental hypothesis needs to be rejected. So our null hypothesis was that there will be no difference in the reaction time between the participants in the condition without marijuana and the participants who were given 0.5 grams of marijuana. At the end of our experiment, we always need to state what happens to the null hypothesis. So at the end of this experiment, we accept the experimental hypothesis and reject the null hypothesis as there was a difference between the participants in condition with marijuana and the participants without marijuana. So, just a quick warning, you will be expected to know basic maths on this course, which may not be explicitly covered in your lessons. So you're going to be expected to know some things from GCSE that we won't really cover in lessons. Big Shaq, the one and only. Man's not hot. Never hot. So you're going to need to know things like recognising decimals, significant figures, fractions, percentages, ratios, mean, median, mode, percentage increase and decrease, translating graphs and understanding mathematical symbols. Although we're not going to go through all of these in class, some of these may be addressed in your lessons and if you've got any worries, you can come and ask us and we're always here to help. So I think that's the end. I hope that you have enjoyed that. Remember, you can pause, rewind and forward whenever you need to and also watch this video for revision purposes. See you next week.